This is for David Emery and Doris Pope. Presuppositional apologetics means simply that we recognize that you've got to start someplace. Every worldview, every philosophy starts someplace. It's a matter of faith and it's unavoidable. I believe the Bible because the Bible is the Word of God. And I know it's the Word of God because it says it is and because it's the Word of God, it can't lie so it must be the Word of God. But, just as truly, I trust my reason because it's rational to do so. Because my reason tells me that it's a rational thing to be reasonable and to trust my reason and therefore I reason rationally to trust and trust my reason. Yeah. This is the realization that you've got to start someplace. Now, does this mean then that we're all left blindly wandering around in our own circles and we can never reach out and touch the other person in his circle? No. And for this reason, Christianity actually is true. Not only true to itself, but true to what's here. True to the world and true to human nature. True to what God has made man to be. Uh, I asked uh, my students earlier, how do you convince a blind man that there's such a thing as light? And they thought about it and said, well, you can't logically convince him. I said, yes, you can. Heal his blindness. If all we're talking about is logic in the abstract and arguments in the abstract, you could say that we get stuck in circles. I have my presuppositions, you have yours. And never the twain shall meet. But that's not the way it is. You see, we are the image of God. That unbeliever over there, who hates Christ, hates Christ, but it's Christ he hates, or he wouldn't be an unbeliever. And therefore, he cannot live with his fabricated worldview. He cannot cease to be the image of God. And if you poke and you prod hard enough, it's going to come out. If you ask the right questions, it's going to become clear that his worldview is not consistent with itself. He's not consistent with it. He has to borrow from Christianity to, be, to say the simplest basic things like, this is good, that's evil, or I love you. Those don't arise in a naturalistic system. Neither the pantheistic, pantheistic East nor the materialist West give us, I love you. That flows from the heart of the triune God. And so what we do on the one hand is to defend against the attacks of the unbeliever by answering honest questions, insofar as they're honest, with honest answers. We, more than that, we turn his arguments back on himself and say, no, wait, look, this is what you believe, right? Well, doesn't this lead here? Doesn't it lead there? Does it lead, doesn't it lead to things that you don't admit and don't want and actually don't live? But having said all that, well, does that mean that we can never prove that Christianity is true? Well, what means what you mean by proof? We can prove he's wrong. Or at least we can prove that he can't live with his system, or that the best he can do is surrender himself to nihilism and madness. But on the other hand, God has given us the sword of the Spirit. He's given us the gospel. We can cure the blind eyes. Through our words, God can raise the dead. Remember the, the parable in Ezekiel? Was Ezekiel sent out to preach to bones, dry bones? How pointless is that unless God does a miracle? And so the other part of presuppositional apologetics is that we preach the gospel. We declare in no uncertain terms that man's a creature, a sinner, and yet someone that Jesus came to save. That there is life, there is hope, there is salvation in Christ. And God can do the miracle and raise the dead to life and open the blind eyes. And suddenly it all becomes perfectly logical and makes perfect sense when the unbeliever is no longer an unbeliever. Because we're fighting a spiritual battle, not an intellectual one. Oh, there are intellectual side issues, and we must address them. But we must primarily wield the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, or all we're doing is arguing with dead men.